In my practice, I use ultrasound on almost every single patient. And the reason for that is I happen to be interested in the vitreoretinal retinal space, and I'm interested in the adherence of the vitreous to the surface of the retina. Uh, I do use it for opaque media, and I use it for clear media. It is a critical part of my examination of patients. It's something that I would do on a routine basis, for example, when a patient has flashes and floaters but doesn't have an opaque media, I'd like to be able to evaluate the vitreous. So for me, B-Scan is a very prominent part of an examination to give me a feeling of what's going on inside the eye. And I don't know of any other way to obtain that, even with indirect ophthalmoscopy and slit lamp evaluation, it adds a, a dimension that you just can't get any other way. It's a cross-sectional image, and it's not reliant upon reflectivity of light. It's reliant upon the acoustic impedance mismatch of the materials inside the eye. Ultrasound will remain relevant for a very long time. OCT is a wonderful cross-sectional distance measuring piece of equipment. And that's what ultrasound is also. The difference being that ultrasound is acoustic in nature and OCT is optical and light related. Uh, they still do the same thing. You're using distance as a form or time as a form of distance related material and feedback. And all these distance measuring pieces of equipment are critical. Another major difference between the acoustic impedance mismatch of sound versus reflectivity of light is the ability to see outside the posterior portion of the globe. The periphery is a critical portion to examine, and you can't do that, at least not at the present time, with OCT. So I don't look that line at them as competitive. I look at them more as a correlation or additive. I use B-Scan all the time to examine the periphery, and I use it also to examine the posterior pole, recognizing the resolution axially and laterally is not as good as OCT, but as a format upon which to base my imagery of the inside of the eye, to recreate an anatomical map, if I can, of the entire inside of the eye, getting the most information that I can, both from the periphery with ultrasound and from the posterior pole with OCT. So uh, they are additive, they are not competitive. And I often will find that I can feel more comfortable about some of my diagnosis on OCT with the knowledge that I get from ultrasonography. I have been using a number of ultrasound machines over the course of years, and I can tell you that I have had an LX machine uh, for a number of years now, and I have found it to be very helpful. It's an extremely clean picture, and um, I have found it to be reliable, and I have found it to be very useful in almost all the examination techniques that I use. Uh, it has a smaller probe uh, size, at least laterally, which makes it easier to examine a patient. You can get the uh, probe on, I happen to use a eyelid technique, meaning I use the probe directly on the surface of the eyelids or the skin of the eye rather than on the sclera. And I full recognize that many people prefer to put it on the sclera. Uh, I choose the eyelid and I have found that it's uh, an easier probe to use than at the present time any other device. The image quality is good, the reproducibility is good, and the thing I like the most is the ability to store movie segments, which are basically what I store almost all the time. I rarely take any still photography anymore or still images, uh, except for proof of the examination being completed, because so much is reliant upon the uh, real-time imagery of what you're trying to get. So I will often have the patient move their eyes back and forth. A small probe is very helpful for that, and the image quality is strong enough and good enough. The signal to noise is of great benefit uh, in establishing what you're doing. 
and what you're seeing. So the image quality makes it quite, quite easy to recognize patterns. And for the physician who does ultrasound on a less than frequent basis, this ability to store information in a movie format actually allows someone else to be able to look at that same examination even when the patient has left. Impossible to do that with still images. So the ability to store, to download, and to uh, even store outside the system without any changes uh, is a major, major contribution. So I find it very useful and I have used the LX device uh, routinely for all of ophthalmic edges, uh, typical examples of pattern recognition for the uh, world community. Ophthalmic Edge is a free website, free to the user and with no advertising. It's an educational website to teach people how to do a number of things. It started about two and a half years ago uh, as a, a unique effort to try to teach ultrasonography. And that's what was the preliminary material on the site. So we started to put together a series of lectures and the lectures are put on the website so that people could learn about ultrasound fairly easily. They can even write in questions and receive answers as much as possible. Although diagnoses can't be made, it is possible to teach somebody on the website with real-time imaging, and that's what I wanted, the ability to recognize patterns of abnormality. Most physicians rely upon uh, their knowledge of anatomy and pathology to make a diagnosis, and now you're seeing them with ultrasound in cross-section. If you can move the probe around or have the patient move their eye, you can see that pathology and know whether it is moving and at what rate it's moving if you're in real time. Uh, that helps a great deal in, in establishing what the diagnosis might be or certainly should be considered the diagnosis if you're looking at B-scans. In formats which are frozen, like images that are just grabbed, you can't see any of that. So this website started as a free educational website with no advertising and no charge. And we're going to try to keep it that way. It has really gone around the world quickly, mostly through uh, social media networks because I try to teach as much as I can. It is exhausting after a while and using the web is an awful lot easier, at least to bring those who are interested up to a certain level where they might take it further. So it's my uh, hope that the website continues in a free state, allows people to get their, pardon the expression, feet wet in a field that they may not know, or even make some contributions because the website will accept anybody's information if they're willing to give it and stand by it. You re they retain their own trademark, they don't give up anything. We're not trying to establish any, um, any order, only to give information about the basics of ultrasound and how it might be used to improve your practice. What I use it for and then a library of pattern recognition of abnormalities seen over the course of a couple of years now, which have been established as real-time movie segments. So that when you see a pattern, you say, you know, I've seen that before. And it gives you a basis upon which to go back and review what might be a diagnosis that you might have missed.